Hey guys, it's me, EOD Gaming here, and today we will be going to test the unreachable side blade signature light cone at Super Imposition 1. I want to know how it fares up against a secret vow, Super Imposition 5 as well. You guys really requested for this one, so I spent a bit of money, pulled it, and we're going to test it out as well. First things first, I'm going to be running the unreachable side on some mobs. We will see what the damage are. We will switch over to a secret vow uh, later on, as well as modify the build so that we factor in this 18% crit uh, rate as well. So as you can see here, now he has about 87% uh, crit rate, 1 or 2 crit damage for unreachable side. Let's head into the testing. A blade knows no mercy. Okay, so how we're going to do this is I'm just going to use an E to use his enhanced skill. And we're going to smack this red guy here. Don't bother about looking at these guys because I'm afraid that the wind shear or the wind break damage might get in the way of the numbers, making it hard to see for you guys. So I'm just going to show you real quick. This is for 1 or 2. Light Cone is unreachable side, 1 or 2 crit damage, and let's go ahead and smack this guy. So it seems like 4.3k, 4.3k, he's about to die, so let's just back off real quick and swap the build. So here, I'm going to now be switching over to this one, a secret vow at super in position 5. But the biggest thing is, if you realize, like, the 18% crit damage, the crit rate, if I just swap it just like that, giving him the full crit damage, is actually not fair to uh, the unreachable side because it doesn't factor in the increase in crit rate. It just makes it more consistent. But anyway, we are focusing on the like, crit damage numbers. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be switching the build real quick. I've already prepared it so that I can factor in the decrease in the crit damage amount. So as you can see, um, now it's 67 versus previously it's like 102. A blade knows no mercy. Okay, so I'll press uh, skill real quick and I'll show you. So the thing about the secret vow if he's lower hp than the enemies he gets the full 80 percent bonus on the enemy target as well um, and these are the stats for him 67 percent crit damage and let's go ahead and smack similarly uh, this red guy here just focus on these numbers okay so we saw both of their numbers the unreachable side as well as a secret vow for those of us who don't remember unreachable side was like 4.3k per attack uh, while the secret vow was like 4.1k something uh, per attack. If you ask me, I think it's pretty close considering that one is a 4 star, one is a 5 star. But I don't think it's just fair just looking at it like that. Let me talk about two things that are unfair to the unreachable side. The first thing first, of course, uh, if we, I just switch real quick to this light cone here. The stat ratio, of course, slightly favors a secret vow, but like only by 2, two or 3% crit damage. Because if we add in the 36% um, equivalent crit damage, from the unreachable side's crit rate, it will be slightly higher on the equivalent build. So that is like kind of the testing uh, variances. That's one thing to note, but 2-3%, I don't think it makes or breaks the test. It will maybe only be like 100 or 200 more difference on the damage numbers. But the biggest, biggest issue uh, that I want to point out that is a little bit unfair is we are seeing a secret vow at its best. Note that we took the whole entire 80% into calculation when comparing that 4.1k to 4.3k. In reality, um, most of the time, you might not be getting this 40%, especially if the enemy is below 50%, especially if it's like a big monster below 50%. Why is that? Uh, Blade, once he uses his ultimate ability, as we see here, this 50%, for those of you who don't know, if he's at very low life and you use his out, it actually pushes his HP back to 50%. So it, in a sense, it like heals him up and you will be attacking the enemy at that 50% mark, not at that 10% or wherever you were before you use the ultimate ability. So once the enemy is below 50% HP, basically you don't get this bonus in his ultimate ability. That is like the biggest and most important thing that not many people might know if you don't know like the mechanics of his ultimate. Um, so that is the first thing you want to consider. The next part is usually when you are running in the memory of chaos and you're life stealing up, you can say like if we will put it um, just very dirty mats calculation, most likely this 40% will occur maybe half the time of the battle since the mid midpoint of his HP usually is around 50%. He has some life steal, he does get healing, his ultimate brings it down to 50%, he has enhanced attacks that like saps his own life. So let's say it happens 50% of the time, that is a 20% decrease in overall damage, which I think is very very significant uh, when comparing the two numbers. It also makes him a little bit uh, harder to tell especially if you're missing some crits towards the end, that does uh, give a bit more RNG, a bit more variance, which I don't really like. I think uh, Unreachable Side does offer a lot more consistency, uh, especially with the higher amounts of crit rate. 
So now that we talked about a secret vow a bit and why it's unfair after seeing how great his numbers were uh, on paper and that disclaimer aside, I want to talk about my thoughts and why I think the unreachable side is still good for a certain group of people as well. Um, and that group of people, I mean, there are two different kinds of people. The one that really um, don't really care too much about this character, just wants him to play as like another win DPS so you can break the enemy. Maybe it's like your secondary DPS in a team with, maybe I don't know, maybe a Zealer or maybe other characters that are coming out in future. Uh, in that case, uh, I don't think uh, people will want to spend, for example, 60 pools, 70 pools and beyond, which might cost hundreds of dollars if you are spending money for... Uh, and I don't recommend it for free to play, uh, just a disclaimer as well. I don't think light cones are ever necessary as we saw, it's quite close still. But uh, if you are talking about fairness for this light cone, I think it's a pretty strong light cone, uh, uh, especially for people who want a main blade. The, when you are maining a character, you want to make him like your main DPS in the squad, you, uh, what you want is consistency. And that's something that this light cone offers uh, over a secret vow at S5. Regardless of the HP or enemy, you are doing consistent amount of damage, the same at the start and the same towards the end. Uh, that is quite important factor to consider uh, rather than thinking of it as like a de the declining amount of damage that Blade will be doing across the, the, the memory of chaos floor uh, turn counts and stuff like that. Another thing why I think it offers a lot more consistency is uh, it offers crit rate which no other destruction like cone offers except for a 3 star one. I think it's this one here. Yeah. So other than this one here, no other uh, destruction like cone offers three uh, crit rate in their, in their stats so far. Not even like the 5 star like cones that we see and um, this one of course you have much lesser HP which Blade skills off both of HP as well as attack and as you can see even like the 5 star a uh, 4 star like cones already so much lesser in terms of main stat so 3 star is a lot lesser definitely um, crit rate you have 18% here <coughs> um, for Blade specifically he has a lot of crit rate in his tracers as well he has 12% in his tr crit tracers coming from here here and here which is a total of 12%. So you add on this 18%, you got 30% right there. Um, especially together with, if you consider um, gear that he will be using. If you have his best in slot, we don't have it in this video. Just This is just for testing. If you have the Longevous Disciple here, it gives you 16% additional. So that takes you up to 46. 46%, you plus 5 base crit rate that all characters have. That's already above 51% just by using his best in slot and just by using uh, his the light cone and the tracers that he naturally gets. So 50% just like that. But not only that, once you put on, for example, Inert Sao Soto, you'll be at somewhere around like 59, let's just say 60% uh, crit rate. That's very, very high. Assuming that each one of your gear has one crit rate each, like one 3% here, everywhere, 3% times six, that's very quickly 78% uh, crit rate on a character already. 78% crit rate considering we are ignoring uh, anything else every every gear just needs one roll in crit uh, rate i think it's very 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 strong for for this character the, which means that his crit damage can actually go up very very high the, the next thing to note is a five star light cone has higher base stats and once you start using the hp main stat here once this becomes uh, the four piece uh, longevous set here this 12 percent it will scale slightly better with five star light cone stats compared to a four star or three star uh, light cone stat as well since this is also his best in slot that is just something that I want to just uh, very quickly point out as well. And so yeah, those are my comparison thoughts on both of them. Uh, what do you think? Do you agree with my thoughts? Uh, do you agree with like the testing? Anything else you want to see as well? Uh, note that of course, I don't have Clara on this account. I still haven't gotten her till today after spending a lot of money. And I bought the light cone for you guys. You guys requested it. So I decided to test it out as well. If you appreciate that, uh, give me a like, comment and subscribe for more of such future content too. And do check out these two other videos I have here. And thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.